This is chapter 3, section 5, and I'd like to go ahead and show you a, uh, another method of solving for the variable x when given a quadratic equation. It's called completing the square. If you look at this equation, yes, we could factor this and solve for x. However, I'm going to be using this equation and show you completing the square. Here we go. First, any everything with x, you want to leave it on the left side. Everything without the x, you want to bring it to the right side. So you bring the 3 over to the right side, it becomes negative 3. And the reason again is because you subtract 3 from the left and the right side. And then we have x squared minus 4x left on the left side. And what you want to do is you want to take that number, negative 4, the coefficient of x, and you divide it by 2, which is, of course, 4, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And you square that, and we get 4. Now you take that number and write it in that little space that I've created. But what's the rule that you learned in pre-algebra? Once again, if you add a 4 on the left side of the equal sign, you must add a 4 on the right side of the equal sign as well. The left side, we could go ahead and factor this. It's going to be x minus 2 squared. And also, here's a little quick hint. Notice that negative 2 that we add here is always going to be the number that goes in the factor form. Is equal to negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Then, to solve for this, we want to take the square root, because if we do that, the square and the square root sign cancels each other out. And we're going to take the square root on the right side of the equal sign as well. So we get x minus 2 is equal to, don't forget, the plus minus 1. That's very, very important. So from here, we're going to, I'm going to rewrite this as two separate equations x minus 2 equals 1 for the positive, and x minus 2 equals negative 1 for the negative portion of the plus minus that we had before. If we solve for x here, we get x equals to 3, and again, solve for x here, we get x equals to 1. Okay. Let me show you that you, you would get the same answer had we used the factor form. So from this, if we factor this, we get x minus 3, x minus 1 equals to 0. In my previous lesson in chapter 3, section 4, I showed you that having this means x minus 3 is 0, and x minus 1 equals to 0, where you get x equals to 3, and x equals to 1. 3, 1, 3, 1. So as you can see, using the completing the square gives you the same answer as the factoring method. Then you might ask, why would you want to learn a different method, a new method, when we could have done and used the same method that we've been using? Well, we were able to solve for x by factoring here. However, what if you couldn't factor? What if the equation was not factorable? Then you'd have to go ahead and use the completing the square method. Okay. So in my next example, I have an equation where it, the, uh, the quadratic equation is not factorable, so let me show you how the completing the square is useful. As you can see, with this example, x squared plus 4x plus 11, it's not factorable. Okay? So we can't use the method that we learned in section 4. So what are we going to do? Use completing the square. First, I'm going to take that 11, bring it to the right side of the equal sign, giving us negative 11. Notice the sign change. And I'm going to take the coefficient of the x, meaning 4, and then divide it by 2, giving us a 2, and square it, once again, giving us a 4. Then we take that 4 and then add it to the left side of the equal sign. Whatever you do to the left side of the equal sign, you must do it to the right side of the equal sign as well. Then, if I were to go ahead and factor this, we get x plus 2 squared. It's always going to be in that format. Again, notice the 2 is what, where that 2 goes in there. Or you could just factor that. 
and that's equal to negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. Once we have something that is squared, to get rid of, the, to get rid of that square sign, we take the square root. If we take the square root on the left side, we have to take the square root on the right side as well. On the left side, we have x plus 2. On the right side, again, we learned it in the imaginary or the complex number section that the negative comes out, it turns into an i. So we get i, square root of, since the negative sign came out, became an i, we only have 7 left inside. Don't forget, whenever you take the square root of the left and the right side, it's always plus minus. And then the last part of the question would be simply subtract 2 from the left and the right side to make the x by itself. So we get x equals to negative 2 plus minus i root 7 as our final answer. Of course, you're more than welcome to write the final answer as negative 2 plus i root 7 and negative 2 minus i root 7 separately as well, because that's what that plus, my, plus minus sign means. Okay, so again, completing the square is a concept um, a lot of people have trouble with. Um, so let me go ahead and do one more example to show you uh, how completing the square can be useful. All right, here's our third and final example. In this case, the question is set up where we have all the ones with the x's on the right side and ones without the x on the, right, uh, on, on the left side, <laughs> and then all the ones without the x on the right side already. Okay? So let's begin. We're going to start by taking the coefficient of x, negative 10, divided by 2, which is negative 5, and square that, which is 25. And that's what goes on the left side of the equal sign. But don't forget to include uh, the 25, the same number on the right side of the equal sign as well. Again, if we factor this, we get x minus 5 squared. Notice that negative 5, same numbers right there, is equal to negative 4. Negative 29 plus 25 is negative 4. To get rid of that square root sign, I'm going to square side. I'm going to take the square root of the left and the right side. Since the square root and the square sign cancels out, we're left with x minus 5 on the left side. And the right side, once again, take that negative out, turn it into an i, and then square root of 4 will be 2. Don't forget the plus minus. There you go, folks. Okay. And then the last stage will be to just add a 5 on the left and the right side, giving us x equals to 5 plus minus. Only thing I'm changing is instead of i times 2, I'm just going to change it into 2 times i. Okay. So there you have it, folks. If you try to do this question using a uh, quadratic formula or some other method, it could get pretty complicated, yeah, um, quite difficult. But completing the square, as you can see, after um, three examples, once you get the hang of it, um, it's not as bad. Okay. So I hope this lesson uh, helped you on learning how to complete the square or solving quadratic equations using completing the square.